everybody. Welcome to Ozarks Live. As you can see, I'm flying solo at the moment, but just for the moment, Tom is out and about, so we're going to join him a little bit later in the show. We have a lot to cover today, but first, this guy. You know this guy right here. <laughs> Digital content producer for Color 10, Tony Nguyen. How are you? Good to see you. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. Okay, so Crime Traveler, fascinating podcast. If you haven't been back through to listen to some of these, um, this is the third installment of the Gypsy Blanchard story. Yes, it is. The third and final. The third and final for the season as well. Uh, we decided to, this was a good, a good enough one to say, hey, this is the, the end of the season. We will be back. Uh, it's just a matter of time. They'll be back with another season. But before we get too deep into the woods on this conversation, we have a little preview to show you. So take a listen to this. Due to me finding out, well, that she was using me, I maybe do regret uh, putting my heart out there, but in another way, I don't regret it only because it has made me a stronger person. The jury saw the bloody blue latex glove go to John War while murdering Blanchard. Detectives testified that the knife was mailed in an envelope from Springfield to go to John's home in Big Bend, Wisconsin. Detectives found the weapon days later in a closet while searching go to John's bedroom. Autism kept him from comprehending the crimes he committed. The prosecution, however, was set on proving that Godijan knew what he was doing prior to the murder. That may have been most strongly proven on day two. Gypsy helped Godijan plan the murder. In fact, she admitted to supplying the weapon. I supplied the knife. Where did you get the knife? I stole it from Walmart. Okay, Nicholas Godijan, Gypsy Blanchard. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, none of us will ever forget, seeing her walk into the courtroom. Yeah, I mean, she had uh, she had the whole the whole community convinced that uh, for for years that she uh, could not walk, was wheelchair bound, had to eat through a feeding tube, and had all you know a laundry list of all these sicknesses. And um, in fact, she, you know, she she was relatively healthy, um, and a lot of those things she did not need. As much as one can be healthy under those conditions, that she was forced. Apparently, to yeah. live under. Yeah. All right, so it started. I've, take, I've got some notes here. Uh, part one was called the con artist. Mm -hmm. Part part two, trapped in sickness, which is kind of what we were just talking to. Okay, part three, which is the new one that drops tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Till death do us part. Okay, so what what opens up in this last segment? Well, this episode primarily focuses on Nicholas Godijan, mm -hmm. his his perspective on everything. Um, the previous two episodes were all about Dee Dee and then Gypsy, so, you know, it only made sense to talk about the third player in this. Exactly, and, and I remind the, our viewers that the, the voice you heard there, Bria Douglas, one of our reporters, got an exclusive interview with him. Yeah, she uh, sent some, some letters to him and he responded and he just wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to twist his words and things like that and uh, built up a rapport and said, okay, let's do an interview. So there's 30 minutes of, of talking to the killer of, of, of D.D. Blanchard uh, that's ac actually on our website right now, but uh, tomorrow we mm -hmm. will really kind of focus on really key things that he, he, he talked about and, and how, I mean, shockingly, the biggest thing to me was that um, he's, still, he's still in love with, with, with Gypsy. Um, you know, he, he's sad that, you know, he, he knows that she had manipulated him, but, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he's sticking to the word that, uh, you know, he told her that he will always love her, and, and he does. Um, however, he, uh, you know, he, he had to pay his life for uh, this, this relationship with this, this woman. Well, and, and when you go back, this is why if you haven't listened to this, it would behoove you to go back and listen. I mean, as, as vivid as this case is, there are things that, that I forgot. Um, they had a relationship sort of online for a couple of years. And then they kind of got found out because Gypsy told someone. Yeah. But then he came to town and he actually met Dee Dee. So there's so many facets to this. You know, they were trying to figure out how could Gypsy 
uh, have a relationship. And that's all she really wanted. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she was a teenager at the time. She wanted to act like other teenagers. She, she had friends that all had boyfriends and things like that. And she was just like, why can't I? Right. And so she knew that Dee Dee was like, no, it's just you and me kind of a thing. And she had a secret online boyfriend and they tried to make it work, you know? And so they came to Sp Springfield and tried to do a, a meeting where they just kind of bumped into each other. And Dee Dee was like, no, this guy, no, absolutely not. And pretty much after that conversation was when Gypsy was like, okay, plan B, we're going to have to kill her. The rest is history. My yeah. goodness. Okay, Crime Traveler, you go to OzarksFirst.com, go to the news tab. You scroll down, you'll find Crime Traveler. Tony Wynn, thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. See you next season. Okay, coming up, we're going to catch up with Tom.